Please rise. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. God invites us to come into his presence and worship him with humble and penitent hearts. Therefore, let us acknowledge our sinfulness and ask him to forgive us. Holy and merciful Father, I confess that I am by nature sinful and that I have disobeyed you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have done what is evil and failed to do what is good. For this, I deserve your punishment both now and in eternity. But I am truly sorry for my sins and trusting in my Savior Jesus Christ, I pray. Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. God, our Heavenly Father, has been merciful to us and has given his only Son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ and by his authority, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. For all that we need in life, and for the wisdom to use all your gifts with gratitude and joy, hear our prayer, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the steadfast assurance that nothing can separate us from your love, and for the courage to stand firm against the assaults of Satan and every evil, hear our prayer, O Christ. Christ, have mercy. For the well-being of your holy church in all the world, and for those who offer here their worship and praise, hear our prayer, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. Merciful God, maker and preserver of life, Uphold us by your power and keep us in your tender care. Amen. The works of the Lord are great and glorious. His name is worthy of praise. O Lord, our Lord, how glorious is your name in all the earth. Almighty God, merciful Father, you crown our life with your love. You take away our sin. You comfort our spirit. You make us pure and holy in your sight. You did not spare your only Son, but gave him up for us all. O Lord, our Lord, how glorious is your name in all the earth. O Son of God, eternal Word of the Father, you came to live with us, you made your Father known, you washed us from our sins in your own blood, you are the King of glory, you are the Lord. O Lord, our Lord, how glorious is your name in all the earth. Let us pray. Grant us, Lord, the spirit to think and to do what is right, that we who cannot do anything that is good without you may by your help be enabled to live according to your will. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for this morning's readings.
I invite you to follow along on the back of your bulletin with the scriptures for this ninth Sunday after Pentecost. Our Old Testament lesson has the prophet Jeremiah speaking a warning to the false teachers and a promise that God will send people who do share his message with the people and, and finally, at the proper time, will send Christ uh, to be our righteousness and fulfill all those gospel promises of the Old Testament. Woe to the shepherds who destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture, declares the Lord. Therefore, this is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says about the shepherds who shepherd my people. You have scattered my flock. You have driven them away. You have not taken care of them, but I will certainly take care of you because of the evil things you have done, declares the Lord. I will gather what is left of my flock out of all the countries where I have driven them, and I will bring them back to their pastures. They will be fruitful and multiply. I will raise up shepherds over them who will shepherd them. They will no longer be afraid or terrified, nor will any be missing, declares the Lord. Listen, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will raise up for David a righteous branch who will reign wisely as king and establish justice and righteousness on earth. In his days, Judah will be saved and Israel will dwell securely. This is the name by which he will be called, the Lord our righteousness. This is the word of our Lord. If you would turn to page 72 in the front of your hymnals, we will continue with the singing in unison of our psalmody for this morning, Psalm 23. Our 
Our second lesson for today is taken from Paul's letter to the Ephesians. We read chapter 2, verses 13 through 22. Uh, This was especially good news for the Gentile Christians in Ephesus to hear that that which had divided the Jews from the Gentiles has been removed. They all have faith in the one Savior, Jesus Christ, and Jewish and Gentile Christians alike rejoice in that being part of one church. But now in Christ Jesus, you who once were far away have been brought near by the blood of Christ. For he himself is our peace. He made the two groups one by destroying the wall of hostility that divided them when he abolished the law of commandments and regulations in his flesh. He did this to create in himself one new person out of the two, in this way making peace. And he did this to reconcile both to God in one body through the cross by putting the hostility to death on it. He also came and preached peace to you who were far away and peace to those who were near. For through him we both have access to the Father by one spirit. So then, you are no longer foreigners and strangers, but you are fellow citizens with the saints and members of God's household. You have been built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets with Christ Jesus himself as the cornerstone. In him the whole building is joined together and grows into a holy temple in the Lord. In him you too are being built together into a dwelling place for God by the Spirit. Alleluia. My word will not return to me empty, but will accomplish what I desire and achieve the purpose for which I sent it. Alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. These words are written that we may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Please rise for the reading of this morning's gospel lesson. As this is also our sermon text for the day, I will not have you rise to hear it read at that time. This morning we hear from the Gospel according to Mark. We read chapter 6, verses 30 through 34 in Jesus' name. The apostles gathered around Jesus and reported to him all that they had done and taught. He said to them, Come away by yourselves to a secluded place and rest a while. For there were so many people coming and going that they did not even have a chance to eat. They went away in the boat to a deserted place by themselves. But many people saw them leave and knew where they were going. They ran there on foot from all the towns and arrived ahead of them. When Jesus stepped out of the boat, he saw a large crowd. His heart went out to them because they were like sheep without a shepherd. He began to teach them many things. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise be to you, O Christ. The congregation may be seated. We continue with the singing of the first four verses of our hymn of the day, hymn 362, Lord Jesus Christ, my Savior blessed.
May the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be yours as we hear and meditate upon his holy word. Amen. As I mentioned, our sermon text for today is our gospel account. I again read the introductory verse. The apostles gathered around Jesus and reported to him all that they had done and taught. Heavenly Father, as we hear your word, enlighten our minds with the understanding of that gospel message that Jesus had imparted to the apostles and which they had shared. Help us to see God's plan also for us who have heard that word. Amen. We have Mark, for the first time in the Gospels, describing the disciples with a new title. The apostles came back. Jesus had sent them out on their first test flight. He had been instructing them. While he spoke in parables so much to the crowd, he spoke in clear terms to the disciples teaching them about God's plan of salvation, about mankind's sin and God's grace, which was going to be expressed in Christ's saving work in his life and death and resurrection. And he had sent the disciples out with that word of truth and had given them authority. They were to, they were to speak his word, law and gospel. They had authority to cast out demons and they had authority to heal people. And we're told in the other gospel accounts that they had driven out demons, they had laid hands on people and had healed them and had preached about repentance. This was an exhilarating thing for them. The Lord had sent them out for a determined time and now they were back and reporting. It was exhilarating. We laid hands on this person and they were healed. We told this demon to leave and he had nothing to do but leave. It was also taxing. And we have Jesus saying to them, come away by yourselves to a secluded place and rest a while. They had come back to that area of Capernaum, and every time Jesus was by Capernaum, there were crowds. They couldn't, they couldn't even get time to eat, so Jesus wanted them to get away, to be able to have a break. This is something that you notice pastors and, and Christian school teachers, as well as the people who work in factories and public schools and other things, Take vacations, get refreshed, get refocused. Missionaries, missionaries go on furlough to do the same thing. And here Jesus is desiring that for his disciples who now have been sent out. They are now apostles. You notice that our, our theme in the bulletin is our aptitude to teach. And we're looking at that aptitude that the disciples have in our text today. Do you remember when you were in school going to uh, a class and taking an aptitude test? They had questions on different subject matter and you found out whether or not you were, you were gifted with an understanding of mechanical things or mathematical things or language and your teacher might look at that test and say, you should study to be this, or you should plan on doing that for your livelihood. Did Jesus only pick disciples who were gifted speakers? No. <laughs> he chose a doctor, he chose a tax collector, he chose fishermen. But they were given aptitude. If you look in the dictionary, the first definition of aptitude is a natural or a given talent or ability. Jesus had given the disciples the talent, the ability, as he, as he spoke to the crowds. He modeled how to teach. As he spoke directly to the disciples, he shared with them his true word what to teach. 
And then he sent them out for this first practice run. You and I in our lives, from the time we were little children and our parents were reading to us from the Bible storybook to Sunday school being taught in, in class to v vacation Bible school, confirmation class, hearing the word in worship, you and I have been taught and given God's true word. And we have seen our parents, Sunday school, VBS teachers, pastor, train us, teach us, model to us how to share the word with others. So you and I, as lay people and called worker, have been given an aptitude, an ability, a talent with God's word. That is what the disciples had. When you look in our text, you see uh, an opportunity for them to have a, a rest, a time to reconnect with Jesus, and that, and that went away, didn't it? Jesus and the disciples got in a boat and headed toward the other side of the lake. And this would never happen today with boat motors or with planes, would it? The people ran around the shore, and as they went from village to village, people asked what was going on, and they said, well, Jesus is going up there, and they joined the crowd. By the time they got up to the shore, John says there was a crowd waiting for them. And Jesus says that too here in Mark's account. Many people saw them leave and knew where they were going. They ran there on foot from all the towns and arrived ahead of them. When Jesus stepped out of the boat, he had a large crowd. The second part of the definition of aptitude, beyond a talent, beyond an ability, is an inclination, a leaning towards something. Um, Jesus saw the crowd. What did he say to them? Get out of here. My students and I need private time. Back off. No. No. John in his gospel says that when Jesus saw them, his heart went out to them. His heart welcomed them. And he spoke to them about the kingdom of God. When we take a look at, at these disciples and, and their aptitude to teach, we hear that, that word being used by St. Paul as he talks to Timothy. He says, here's a trustworthy saying. Anyone who desires to be an overseer desires a good thing. And then he has a list of qualifications for a pastor for a teacher, for an overseer. And among them is the aptitude to teach. It's not just the talent or ability, but it's also the desire, isn't it? In the last part of our text, Jesus is teaching the disciples and us to look at the people around us through his eyes. What does our text say? He saw a large crowd, his heart went out to them because they were like sheep without a shepherd. He began to teach them many things. He began to tell them about the kingdom of heaven. He began to tell them about their problem with God because of sin and how he had come to solve that problem by paying for sin and making us his own, buying us back from condemnation. That Inclination is what he gave the disciples as they were brought to see the crowd through his eyes. I had a, had a man in Bible study ask me years ago, Pastor, how come we don't send missionaries to the Catholic Church? How come we don't send missionaries to the Baptists or to the Methodists? Was that a good question? Why don't we? Because those are Christian churches, aren't they? True, there are differences in what they understand the Bible teaching compared to us, and so we follow St. Paul's advice in Romans to recognize where there are differences and keep, keep separate. 
but they are Christian churches. They have the means of grace, the, the marks of the church there. They have the Bible and they read the Bible and teach from the Bible. They, they have the sacraments and the Holy Spirit works through the gospel in all of those things to call people to faith and sustain them in saving faith. So we don't send missionaries to Christian churches. Where do we send missionaries? To those places where people bow down to statues of stone or wood or metal. To those places where they have made up a God and they believe that through much effort and pain they will try to earn their way into paradise by obedience. We receive as as members of the Wisconsin Synod, uh, information from this group called Speaking the Truth in Love to Mormons or Speaking the Truth in Love to Muslims. We see mission pamphlets coming to us from the corners of the world where there are millions and millions of people and a very small percentage of them know Christ. And through our enlightened sight, through seeing through Jesus' eyes, we recognize that there are people out there who are like lost sheep, without a shepherd, straying and doomed. And that moves us, knowing God's love for us in Christ, that moves us to look to them in the same way Jesus did. His heart went out to them and he began to teach. This text encourages us. Isn't this an interesting thing, thing so many times when we see this text, the following passages about Jesus' miraculous feeding of the 5,000 are connected to it. And this focus is lost in looking at the wondrous act that Jesus performed. But here Jesus is talking to us about our talent, our ability that he has given us, that has been trained into us. And he's sharing with us the motivation about the need, spiritual need, eternal need of those people who do not yet know Christ to warm our hearts and to make us willing not only to, to speak as we have opportunity, to, but to support missions and, and for many to consider becoming an apostle, a disciple, whether it's pastor, teacher, missionary and receiving further training and then being sent out. I pray the Holy Spirit help you to see those around us in the world who do not know Christ through Jesus' eyes and let that move you in your life, in your mission, in your ministry. Amen. Please rise. Having heard the message, we join in confessing our Christian faith, making use of the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became fully human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who in unity with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We join in prayer.
Almighty God, Heavenly Father, once again we have enjoyed the privilege of gathering in this house of worship to hear your holy and precious word. May its message of salvation through Christ stir up our hearts to faith and love and produce the full fruits of good works in our lives. May we not forget your word, which we have heard or bring shame upon it by our lips, not, by our lips speaking against it, our hearts not believing it, or our lives not obeying it. Keep your word in the minds and hearts of our loved ones not present with us this day, and return them soon to fellowship with us. Through the Spirit, open the scriptures more and more to our understanding that we might know you better, the only true God and Jesus Christ whom you sent to save us. Father, we greatly need the comfort your word brings us. We are by nature sinful, and our flesh is continual, continually opposed to your will. We often find that we act against your commandments, doing the very things you forbid and neglecting the things that you command. We justly deserve eternal separation from you in hell, but we plead your love and mercy which is revealed to this world of sinners in your word. Let the blood of Jesus Christ, your Son, blot our sins from your memory and present us faultless before you. Our only plea is that you forgive us for his sake. There is nothing that we desire more than eternal life through his merits and mediation. Father, from your word, we know that your heavenly throne is a throne of grace and that Jesus, our Savior, intercedes for us there. To it we come burdened with our worries, cares, and needs, our sorrows, troubles, and illnesses. Fold us to your bosom, and by your counsel and aid relieve us of our many burdens according to your will. We know you are a God so gracious and merciful, so near us when we pray, and so quick to respond to our pleas. Why then should we be fearful or anxious about our future? O Father, according to your own promise, bless us now and always for Jesus' sake, in whose name we ever pray. As who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We join in the sacrament on page 33. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Praise to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In love he has blessed us with every spiritual blessing. He sends the Holy Spirit to testify that we are his children and to strengthen us when we are weak. Now have come the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Christ. To him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb be praise and thanks and honor and glory forever and ever. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of your glory. You are my God and I will exalt you. I will give you thanks for you have become my salvation. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of your glory. Our 
Lord Jesus Christ, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Then he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. O Christ, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. O Christ, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. O Christ, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us your peace. Amen. Congregation may be seated. Uh, the ushers will direct you forward for communion. Our distribution hymn for today is hymn 312.
we join in the song of thanksgiving. Thank the Lord and sing his praise. Tell everyone what he has done. Let all who seek the Lord rejoice and proudly bear his name. He renews his promises and leads his people forth in joy. With shouts of thanksgiving, alleluia, alleluia. Hear the prayer of your people, O Lord, that the lips which have praised you here may glorify you in the world, that the eyes which have seen the coming of your Son may long for his coming again and that all who have received in his true body and blood the pledge of your forgiveness may be restored to live a new and holy life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Brothers and sisters, go in peace. Limit, live in harmony with one another. Serve the Lord with gladness. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen. 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 Please be seated. We close our service this morning with the singing of verse 5 of hymn 362, Lord Jesus Christ, my Savior blessed. Good morning. We're glad you could be with us this morning. We ask our guests and visitors to feel welcome to worship with us again soon. Uh, note before we get into our, our uh, schedule of events for the week, we pray that God be with our emergency responders who had to leave this morning and, and those they had to leave to attend. Uh, we also ask that you would keep Marlene Foreman in your prayers as she is in failing health and uh, is close to going home to see her Lord. Uh, be there uh, in prayer with the family. We have our calendar uh, notes in the bulletin. We also have the August calendars in the back for you to pick up and take with you today. Uh, we've got the update from the voters uh, that we are, are going to be switching uh, service times starting the first Sunday in January for a one-year period, and, and we will go from there. There's a note updating uh, what our plans are for Vacation Bible School, and uh, sounds like you've had, a, had a, a busy week. Did we have did we have some decent rain out here the other day? It, it's always spotty, but I heard from some areas where they got an inch. This, this time of year, we always watch and, and everybody who's connected to agriculture looks for good clouds. <laughs> Another thing to keep in our prayers, God bless your day and your week.